In the center of the United States, we find hundreds and hundreds of dinosaur graveyards. Each one of these dots that you see represents a graveyard that contains sometimes hundreds of thousands of fossils. Geology, young Matthew. Geology. Parts of the USA have the right type of rocks from the right time period. It's really that simple. The Western states, for example, have lots of sedimentary rock layers from the Mesozoic era. Sedimentary rocks are perfect for preserving fossils. And the sheer size of the USA and this variety of landscapes also play a role. Now in many places, like the Badlands and the Rocky Mountain region, natural erosion has exposed ancient rock layers, and this makes it easier to find fossils that have been hidden for, and wait for this, that have been hidden for millions of years. Please subscribe. Many of these dinosaurs are found fully intact, and we've discovered that they died from choking on mud. Have we? And who exactly is we? Now I found a couple of studies which have actually been published that talk about the mass extinction of dinosaurs. And here they are. Now the first one is called a new view of the mass extinction and the worldwide floods. And it states that it does not specifically mention dinosaurs choking on mud as cause of the extinction. And the second published study I found called Does Fossil Site Record Dino Killing Impact also says that it does not support the ideas of dinosaurs choking on mud as the cause of their extinction. But not to worry though, maybe young Matthew here will cite a paper that I couldn't find. And so you have to ask the question, what could cause a tsunami so big that it would encompass the entire United States or at least half of the United States and bury hundreds of thousands of creatures and sea life together all in one large event. An asteroid impact and the evidence supporting an asteroid impact as the most likely cause for the extinction of dinosaurs is pretty strong and it comes from multiple scientific disciplines. The Chicxulub crater is just one example in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and it dates back to about 66 million years ago, right at the end of the Cretaceous period when dinosaurs went extinct. Also around the world there's a thin layer of sediment dating back to the same time period as well and this thin layer is unusually rich in iridium, a very rare element on Earth's surface but common in asteroids. There is no other option other than a global flood. But I just gave you another option. In fact, I gave you the option that all of science supports. Non-avian dinosaurs went extinct because a massive asteroid hit the Earth. And in order to get a fossil, you have to have rapid burial. And so that's the only explanation why we would find these dinosaurs buried and preserved in the positions that we find them. Now, when that massive asteroid hit Earth about 66 million years ago and created the Chicxulub crater in Mexico, it released energy equivalent to billions of atomic bombs going off. And this catastrophic impact threw up massive amounts of dust and debris, blocking sunlight and causing a global impact winter. And this drastic change in climate, along with the subsequent wildfires, acid rain and huge tsunamis, led to a severe disruption of the ecosystems here on Earth. And the resulting environmental havoc caused the mass extinction of about 75% of the planet's species, including the dinosaurs, fundamentally altering the course of life on Earth. So yeah, Matt, they definitely got buried pretty rapidly, pal. And within some of these dinosaurs, we find preserved blood cells. Now, the blood cells were analyzed by different scientists, and we found that they actually died from drowning. Now, I blame myself for this, but I've just lost an hour of my life looking for studies talking about Triceratops blood cells being found. And guess what? Well, apart from answers in Genesis, there isn't a single study showing that we have found Triceratops blood cells. Can you smell burning? Must be Matt's pants on fire again. But anyway, finding preserved blood in dinosaur fossils is extremely rare. And I know Matt just mentioned it as if every other fossil we unearth has got blood cells in it for us to study. 
but there haven't been any definitive discoveries of preserved dinosaur blood cells. Now, there have been some findings that hint at the possibility of soft tissue preservation in dinosaur fossils. For instance, studies have reported structures resembling blood vessels, cells and proteins in some dinosaur fossils. But the way Matt's framing it, it's as if it's a common occurrence, which it is not. Sorry, Matt. No cigar for you again. And so, once again, you have to ask the question, what could cause waves so huge that they would hit in the center of the United States, all the way from the oceanic coast? An asteroid that was six to nine miles in diameter, you we- I'd forgotten this video was about Noah's Ark. <laughs> Noah's Flood is the explanation for these things. In fact, it is the only explanation. Now we must mean apart from the very comprehensive explanation I've provided, all within the first five minutes of this video. So let's see what Matt's got to say. I don't want to call him wrong before you're in him, do I? But before we go any further, I do feel that it's worth pointing out that dinosaurs went extinct 66 million years ago. And Matt is trying to claim that they went extinct because of Noah's flood. Even though a lot of young Earth creationists claim there were dinosaurs on Noah's Ark. So which is it, Matt? You can't have your cake and eat it, I'm afraid. And this is why we find whales perfectly preserved on top of mountains. No, it's not. Whales. <laughs> Whale fossils on mountain tops are a reminder of how much our planet has changed over time. These fossils are there mainly because of the way Earth's surface shifts and moves. Long ago, those mountains were under the sea, where whales lived and died. And over millions of years, the movements of Earth's tectonic plates pushed the sea floors upwards, forming mountains. So the whales that once swam in ancient oceans ended up high up on mountain tops as fossils. It's like a geological time machine showing us a glimpse of the distant past. Very distant. Even more than 6,000 years, Matt. <laughs> now, how could whales have possibly gotten to the top of certain mountains? This is also why we find whales in the desert. This is why we find clams that are in the closed position that were catastrophically buried on top of Mount Everest. Finding clam fossils on Mount Everest is just another example of Earth's history. Millions of years ago, the area where Mount Everest is now was part of an ancient ocean floor, and this ocean was called the Tethys Sea, and it was home to many sea creatures, including clams. And as the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates collided, the sea floor was pushed upwards, and over a very long period of time, it became the Himalayan mountain range, with Mount Everest as its highest peak. So those clam fossils that were originally laid down on the ocean floors and got lifted up to the top of Mount Everest was due to the immense forces of plate tectonics. We also find trees going through all of the different layers of supposed geologic time. People think that these layers are millions of years of different time zones. If you have a tree that was placed there at the time of the formation of the layers around it, that means that the layers are not millions of years of different ages. So, trees embedded in rock layers which are millions of years old are known as polystrate fossils and they occur due to a rapid burial in environments like swamps and floodplains. But that doesn't mean they were caused by the flood map before you say it. This quick burial protects them from decay and scavengers, and over time they get covered by more and more sediment and the organic material undergoes mineralization, turns them into stone. And geological processes over millions of years then uplift these layers and the erosion exposes the now fossilized trees. You know what, I can't help but notice that everything Matt Powell is citing as proof of Noah's flood well, they all have one thing in common. No, not that he's wrong about them, but there is that. But the thing I was thinking about is that all these things require millions of years to happen. Not 6,000 years, Matt. Millions of years. We also find coal deposits that are over 100 feet thick. Now, coal comes from vegetation and different organisms that have been smashed together between sediments. How in the world are you going to get a coal deposit that's over a hundred feet thick. Hmm, forming a hundred foot thick coal
coal deposit is a lengthy process that can take several million years. It begins with the accumulation of plant material, typically in swampy areas where decay is slow, and this organic matter is then buried under sediments, undergoing compression and chemical transformations over time. And the rate at which this occurs varies hugely, with factors like the rate of plant growth, the productivity of the ecosystem, and the rate of sedimentation all playing crucial roles. And I don't want to be Captain Obvious here, yeah? but did you notice the M word was in there again? This shows us that the pre-flood world was extremely lush. There was a lot of vegetation. There was large animals, dinosaurs, that were all buried together with trees and with different organic materials and creating massive, massive amounts of coal. Does it though? Does it really show us that? Or does it show us, Matt, that you have literally no clue when it comes to evolutionary biology? Or you do understand certain aspects of evolutionary biology, but you choose to misrepresent them because you know that every single branch of science proves every single claim you make to be completely impossible. Because the Earth is not 6,000 years old, regardless of what it says in the Bible. Now, mountains themselves are great proof of Noah's Flood. So once again, the best proof that the Earth is only 6,000 years old that you can muster up is another process which takes millions of years to happen. Brilliant, Matt absolutely outstanding. And even if I was feeling generous, which I'm not, some volcanic mountains can form relatively quickly by geological standards, but even they take tens of thousands of years to form, not 6,000. If you look at the layers of some of these mountains, you'll notice that all of the layers are bent. You cannot bend hard rock. That means that all of these layers were moist when they were laid down, and then when the plates were moving, they were bent upwards as all of them were pliable and all of them solidified together in one event. All oh, right, so plate tectonics is okay this time when you think it supports your position. Now the extent to which rock layers bend without breaking depends on the type of rocks and the conditions under which they are subjected to pressure. Sedimentary rocks which are formed from compressed sediment are often more pliable and can bend extensively under pressure, especially when they are deep below the surface where temperatures and pressures are higher. But once again, Matt, this bending is usually a very gradual process occurring over millions of years. According to humanists, the plates on the earth have only been moving about one to two inches per year. And these plates slowly create the mountains as one slides under the other plate. This could not have happened. What the hell are you talking about, humanists? When it comes to this topic, there are really only a few groups of people you should be listening to, man. Geologists or evolutionary biologists. They are the ones who've dedicated their lives to studying this topic, which, given what we've heard from you so far, is something you want to try doing. You are completely clueless, and I feel sorry for anyone who believes you when you say these things. Especially young people. All you're doing is setting them up for a lifetime of ridicule. Imagine if one of these young people was in a science lesson at school and they got asked about any of this stuff. The teacher would pee their pants from laughing so hard. Matt, every single proof of Noah's flood or the earth only being 6,000 years old that you've used so far needs millions of years to happen. These mountain ranges that we see would have shattered and broken. They would have eroded flat. You cannot bend hard rock. All of these rocks that we see on these mountains were all soft and moist at the time of their formation. And that's why they're all perfectly bent many times. And you can see these beautiful photos of mountain ranges that show that they were created by a catastrophic flood and not millions of years of geological time. So just so we can get a little bit of clarity here, Matt, what you're saying then is the branches of science that deal with this topic, and I mean, all the branches of science that deal with this topic are wrong, and you, a young earth creationist, are right. And by extension, the Bible is also right. But all of science is, is wrong. Is, is that what we're saying, Matt? Do you know, I would be terrified to make a claim like that in one of my videos, because I think it would make me come across as an arrogant douchebag. But Matt, you doesn't seem to care. <laughs> And that's why you find polystratofossils connecting all the layers. That's why you find whales on mountains 
clams on mountains, sea life on every single mountain on Earth. Why? Because they used to be under the ocean, you clown! And I think that the most powerful argument of all is the fact that we find 10 mile thick pieces of rock from the Earth's crust that have been subducted rapidly 500 miles down into Earth's hot molten mantle. Oh, Matt, you really are an idiot, aren't you? Or a liar. The jury's still out. <laughs> no, it's not. Subduction at tectonic plate boundaries, like the ones forming at the Tonga Arc, which is what Matt was showing on his diagram there, is a continuous and ongoing process that happens over millions of years. Millions! Millions! It's not an event with a distinct beginning and end, but rather a slow, gradual movement of the Earth's lithospheric plates. These discoveries falsify Darwinian evolution, and it shows that Darwin's book, their holy bible, the holy grail of, of Darwinian evolution, was a lie. The origin of species, by means of natural selection, was a lie. And in this video, we've had the chance, a wonderful opportunity to see that God's word is the truth, and that God's word has trumped the origin of species, and any other old earth perspective that's out there. I've got to ask, what the hell does anything we've talked about in this video have to do with Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution? Apart from the fact that they all require millions of years to happen, of course. Matt, you've got to stop lying to yourself and the people around you. Every single time you create one of these videos claiming that you know better than all of science combined, it just makes you look like a moron, pal. Anyway, thank you as always to these lovely people who all support what I do here on YouTube via Patreon or channel membership. Remember, if you are able to help, then all the ways in which you can are listed in the description below this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you down in the comments section now in a minute. Oh, you're still here then! I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something new. If you did, then you'll probably enjoy this video as well. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't already and subscribe if you're new. And I will see you all again very soon or in a few minutes if you do decide to watch this recommended video. <laughs> Love you, bye!